Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me today for this presentation. In this presentation, I will discuss why we are doing this, the kind of authoring tool we are targeting, and our approach to this task. My name is Zheng Hongyang. I'm a PhD student from the University of Waterloo. This is the joint work with Carlos, Rafael, and Stefan from Naval Lab Europe during my internship. And uh, in the project, we also have Krishna and Miriam in the development phase. Finally, Jimmy is my thesis advisor, and uh, it is our pleasure to share the work with you. Without further ado, let's begin. First, I will introduce some background of this work. As we all know, the multimedia content has become increasingly important in our daily lives, and uh, it is essential for creators to produce high-quality content that is relevant and engaging to their audience. One of the main reasons that we initiate this project is the lack of satisfying image and text search systems and benchmarks. Specifically, the existing benchmarks such as the MS Coco or Flickr 30K have oversimplified settings that may not accurately reflect the complexity of the real world task. For example, the captions are generally generic descriptions that use the words such as man, women, or the same, instead of the, of the uh, specific descriptions just like their names or the locations in the city. Uh, and this could introduce some noise during the evasion, just like the figure on the right hand side that is from the uh, MS Coco dataset. As you can see, multiple captions could match the same images, and multiple images could match the same captions just because of the underspecified details. In addition, for multimedia contents involving well known public figures or landmark locations, just like the Wikimedia articles, we may need a better benchmark. So uh, the author tool we are targeting on is the image and text matching system that are uh, used for uh, searching for relevant images or text from the large scale corpus. <clears throat> for the IR system, they, use, they can use just natural language queries, keywords, or article contents. And for the recommender system, they can use a more diverse type of the data source, just like the geolocations, editing history, etc. But we believe that there is a shared common interest in terms of the relevance annotations. So that is why we initiate this project. And uh, what is our approach? Our approach is based on the Cranfield style test setting that would involve the query, the corpus, and the relevance judgment. We are aware of there is the uh, Wikipedia project that implement the image suggestion functions. We think that is more like a top-down approach, and in contrast, our approach is more like a bottom-up approach. So uh, what is the pros and cons of the uh, Cranfi style test? I think the main uh, advantage is that we can compare different systems or techniques on the same task collections. And uh, we could also build the automatic evaluation systems when the new technique or the new system come in the future because these, the purpose of Cranfield test is to build a reusable benchmark. But there are also some uh, known disadvantage such as there could be the gap between the design experiment setting and the, the final user satisfactory factors because it is very hard to design a metric that is perfectly correlated to the user satisfactory. And uh, it is also hard to model the interactive response in the multimedia content editing session with the Cranfield style test. So after talking about the experiment settings, let's talk about the test collection or the dataset. We have the atomic dataset with the paired uh, uh, resource paper that is also uh, accepted to the CIGAR 2023 conference. The dataset itself is publicly available and uh, 
it is derived from the Vedic data set by Krishna and his colleagues. We use all the images from the Vedic data set and we parse the English Wikipedia for the text collections. For the relevance judgment, we release the sparse relevance judgment that is based on the normal image and text associations in Wikipedia. As for the dense relevance judgment, we expect to release them after the track conference. So here are some current results based on the sparse judgment. The first thing is that there the still the gap between the system they can access the captions just like the BN25 systems and those they solely rely on the pixel values just like the clip model, bleed model or the flower model. And uh, scaling up the pre-trained dataset or the model size could help but it only brings marginal benefit when we compare to the uh, caption based systems. And the model they uh, perform well on the MS Coco dataset doesn't guarantee that they can generalize to the atomic dataset. And there's also another important notice is that uh, when we scale up the number of the images and documents to be searched to a more realistic setting like millions of the candidates, the model effectiveness would grad degrade gra rapidly. So uh, it is an important factor to consider when deploying the systems in the real world. And finally, the hybrid system can work better and uh, fine-tuning the model on the provided training resource could help, but there is still a large gap between the uh, this system to the caption based system. Finally, this is the main purpose for this presentation is the call for participation and uh, collaboration. You can join the Track 2023 workshop with us and uh, the submission is free. And uh, we think the diversity of the Cranfield test is really important. So we are calling for uh, the participants from different communities. You can stay updated uh, by following our website and the uh, contribution are always welcome. So uh, let's build a community driven tools like Wikipedia. Here is the uh, reference that I used today. And uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any further questions about the data set and the evaluation or under the settings, you are, you are free to uh, send an email to me. Thank you for your attention.